How's it going guys and welcome to today's video. In this video I'm going to be discussing a BMW E46 3 Series that presented in the workshop recently. It came in with a very rough idle and poor performance issue and in this video I'm going to be showing you how I diagnosed and fixed that particular problem. The first thing I do with any vehicle that presents like this is I confirm the customer complaint. So I bring it for a road test and I can clearly see that there is performance issues as well. I leave the vehicle to idle for a short period of time and I can hear that rough idle quite easily. With that, I get my scan tool and I plug it in and I do a system check and see what fault codes are logged. There is four fault codes that are logged and the first one is related to fuel trim bank one control limit. The other three are related to misfires in cylinders one, two and three. Once I have that information, I have a very clear idea of where I need to go next. So I monitor the live data and I check to see what the fuel trims are doing. The fuel trims were on the positive side and with that I get a good indication that there is too much air getting into the system. So I set about looking under the bonnet and check for any air leaks that I can find. In this case, I was able to find an air leak on my first inspection very quickly and very easily. Luckily for me, it was that boot that was going from the uh, air box that was split and I was able to see visible cracks in two sections on my initial examination of that. Now to break down fuel trims a little bit for you in case you have a scan tool and you want to check them for yourself. If you are looking at the live data, ideally on the long term fuel trims you want to be seeing around zero and on the short term fuel trims you want to be seeing between plus and minus three. The long term fuel trims are reactive of the short term fuel trims so it reacts based on what them short term fuel trims are doing. In this case I, I had a positive uh, reading on my fuel trims so I was able to uh, understand that there was too much air getting into the engine which therefore was causing the misfires as well. Fuel trims are operated in both an open and a closed loop system and what that means in an open system is it's not at operating temperature. The vehicle is not up to operating temperature yet so it's operating in an open loop system. When it gets up to operating temperature it then goes into a closed loop system. Fuel trims are reactive of the upstream oxygen sensor and that is what um, that is what they respond from and that is what they react from. So it, with that base knowledge that I've given you there you may get a better understanding if you're looking at the live data what you need to look for when looking at the fuel trims. So back to the fix on this particular vehicle I ordered that air intake pipe once it arrives I set about installing it. A very straightforward procedure. The hardest part of this is installing it on the lower side. I would recommend lubricating down on the lower side of that particular um, boot because it is extremely tight. Always make sure that everything is fitting nice and snug and when you have them clamps tightened down that they're not at an angle and everything is basically butted up meeting exactly where they should. So after I put everything back together I then clear the fault codes, I start the engine, I let the vehicle idle until it gets up to operating temperature and then I look at the fuel trims on the live data. I'm very happy with the readings that's coming in, they're now exactly what I would expect to see. No fault codes have returned and I'll bring the vehicle for a road test. The road test shows that the vehicle is now operating exactly like it should be. The performance is now back and we have solved this problem. Now in this case it was one of those ones when you have a knowledge of what to look for on the scan tool, what fault codes can relate to, what the fuel trims can relate to, you can get a very clear guide of what the fault is. If you have a BMW E46, I would highly recommend if you have them fault codes to do the same check that I did and see if you have that issue on your vehicle. I hope you enjoyed this video guys. I hope you found it informative and useful. If you did, please like, share, comment and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.